Hello, uh, my name is Carl Niji and I am the owner operator of a business called Overcoming Dyslexia, ADD, ADHD and Learning Disabilities in Ottawa, Canada. I'm what's known as a Davis facilitator and I get my job title from the gentleman that developed the Davis Method and the Davis Program and his name is Ron Davis. What I'd like to talk about today is an overview of some of the programs that are available from Davis facilitators. It's also worth noting right at the beginning that there are two types of Davis facilitators. There's um, the type of facilitator that has been trained to help people on the, what I like to think of as the dyslexia spectrum, but other people will think of it probably more as the learning disability spectrum. Um, or the overall uh, umbrella term of learning disabilities. And on this spectrum, there are people who have been diagnosed with learning disability type one, type two, uh, dyslexia, ADD, ADHD. They might have problems with dysgraphia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, nonverbal learning disability, PDD, NOS. There'll be a range of difficulties. And that's why I think of it as a spectrum. So there are facilitators that um, deal with those difficulties and their programs aim specifically at that spectrum and those difficulties. The other type of facilitator that there is is a Davis Autism Facilitator and their programs develop for people with autism or Asperger's, everything from very mild to severe and um, Ron developed programs to help there too. And there'll be links below to Davis Autism in the description box below. But today, this is going to be a look at the programs that are available on this dyslexia spectrum. What's going to happen when you call a facilitator is it's going to be an ed educational process. Uh, from some people I've met um, who call me up, are they've read all of Ron's books, they're very knowledgeable, and they just want to do a program straight away. Other people, it's quite an educational process, and that's one of the reasons for these videos. Um, it's also worth noting that when we use the word dyslexia, um, most people think of that straight away as a literacy issue and they pigeonhole it into this literacy and then we get caught up in this whole idea of literacy and school and education and this sort of thing. Um, and that's somewhat of a mistake. Even though the Davis program is most definitely a literacy program, it is also far beyond that. It's, uh, it goes way, way beyond where any other literacy program does, realistically. And that's mainly because of what Ron discovered about the root causes of dyslexia and therefore other learning disabilities as well. So to compare uh, the Davis program to other literacy programs or to think as Davis is just the literacy program is really doing a disservice to both programs. There are some things that are very useful in phonics based uh, programs. However, when, you, when they're not de delivering what they're meant to deliver, uh, and I like to think of that as if you get to the age of about seven, eight years old, and you're not reading at grade level by the time you finish grade two, then probably the phonics programs aren't gonna be the best program for you. You're gonna be looking at a Davis program. If you have a psych ed assessment, then it's gonna be Davis. If, you've had a, if you have an IEP in school, then Davis is gonna be able to help. If you have um, been diagnosed with some form of uh, learning disability, of which there are up to 70 different names that could be applied, then Davis is going to help. So what some people might think of just literacy and ADD as being something different, we think of it on the Davis program as a spectrum of problems and they have programs that are aimed at each one of those problems. So this is why I say Davis goes far beyond uh, just a literacy program. However, because dyslexia means difficulty with the written and spoken word in all of its forms, then it quite obviously is a uh, literacy program as well. And that's speaking from personal experience. So, um, What's going to happen when you contact a Davis facilitator is if you are contacting them through email or text, it is probably not a good idea because you're going to get some standard replies back and um, emailing and text is just not the best mode to communicate with a Davis facilitator. Um, what's going to happen pretty quickly as a facilitator, or I am at least, going to want to go to a phone call consultation straight away. And that's going to be somewhere between half an hour and an hour long, depending on you and depending on your difficulties. 
Uh, in that basic phone call consultation, which is free, so I like to say phone calls are free, you can't do any harm to inquire, what's really gonna happen in that phone call consultation is I'm gonna be looking to get, uh, I have a row of yes boxes in my head that I'm looking to tick and a row of no boxes, and if I get more yeses than nos, then I'll move on to the next step. And the yeses that I'm looking for here really, um, and the questions I'm looking to get answered are, is this program for an adult, or is it for a teenager, or is it for someone who's 10, or is it for someone who's below the age of seven? And depending on who this program is for, then that conversation will shift gears slightly depending on the age. So that's one thing I'm looking for. The next thing I'll also be looking for in a phone call consultation is, have you heard about Davis? Do you know about Davis? Um, also, have you had a psych ed assessment? That's in Canada we call uh, a psych ed assessment is abbreviation of a psychological educational assessment. And I'll be wanting to know what the result of that was because that's very helpful. It also tells me what kind of program I'm probably going to be doing with that person. Uh, where is their reading? Are they reading at grade level and it's behavior issues that are a difficulty or they're uh, reading quite obviously below grade level? and then we're gonna be looking at some help with basic literacy. So I'm looking for, um, really in this phone call consultation, all facilitators are trying to evaluate whether you're a good candidate for a Davis program and whether we should move on to the next uh, step, which is an assessment or a screening. I like to think of the assessment, it is not, by the way, it is not a full psych ed assessment. It's no, it's not that. It's basically uh, an evaluation, if you like. I like to think of it as an in informal interview where uh, this little eight, nine, 10 year old is interviewing me to see if they like me and see if they like the idea of doing a Davis program. And I'm sort of very gently and informally interviewing them to try and find out what difficulties they might be having. And would they like to not have those difficulties? Um, so this assessment is not a psych ed assessment. It's more of a, a screening or a very informal interview. Now, again, depending on age and how knowledgeable the parent might be or the adult might be who's coming to see me, then it could be uh, two to three hours long. I always book a morning or an afternoon. I just give myself lots of time because if the program is for an adult, then that adult might have a lot of questions that they want to ask me. Uh, very often I find that parents are really wanting to quiz me and really dig down on Davis and the problems that their little one might be having. I would say generally speaking that most people who I work with, about 80% I work with children and about 20% I work with adults. And I think that's probably a, a rough average that most facilitators are working with. So this assessment is a really important part of the Davis program and it's really a key component. And if you're trying to find out about Davis by just doing a phone call, you're doing yourself and the Davis program a real disservice because uh, I find the mistake that parents seem to make when they're trying to find out about Davis is because they can't pigeonhole it really quickly and easily. They've been listening to everything the school's been telling them, they've been listening to other methods, and then they listen to a Davis facilitator, and because they can't easily pigeonhole it straight away, uh, they just sort of move on. They take a quick cursory look and then sort of move on. And that's a real shame because you need to slow down a little bit and really try to understand Davis and you're not gonna get that from a phone call. You're gonna get that in an assessment. So the bare minimum you wanna be looking at if you want to even scratch the surface of Davis is this assessment, that's bare minimum. Um, you could of course also read Ron's books which would also be very helpful. Um, once we've done an assessment, uh, what we're really trying to find out in that assessment, sorry, just to back up a little bit, is the answer to four basic questions, okay? And the four basic questions are, first of all, this is who I am, this is what I do uh, as a facilitator, and are you having difficulties or, or are there any problems in your life that you're having, little one? So the first thing we need to know is, are you, what problems are you having or what difficulties are you having? Um, if you are having a difficulty, what is it? Uh, is it difficulty with focusing, difficulty with reading, difficulty following instructions? Is it difficulty tidying your bedroom? What difficulties might you be having or what are you finding hard to do at school and what would you like to find easy at school? So there's different ways we can sort of ask that question and answer it and of course depending on the age that's what will happen. So that's, you. yes, you do have some difficulty. This is your difficulty. Well, would you like to not have that difficulty? That's the next question we're really trying to get answered. 
Um, or what would your life look like if you didn't have these difficulties, if you could read at grade level, if you could do your homework, if school was easy, what would your life look like? Um, and if I get yeses to all of those, then the last question I'm going to ask is, well, I have something that I think would work. Would you like me to try? And if I get a yes to that, then we will go ahead and do a program. There are also some set things, uh, some Davis procedures that we're going to do in this uh, assessment to find out whether your son or daughter or you are a picture thinker, maybe where their reading level is at, and diff uh, facilitators will present in the assessment slightly different. Um, but there are also some standard things that we all do do. The reason why this assessment is so important is we're trying to decide and try to figure out which program is the best program for you. And quite quickly, if you are aged between the ages of five and seven, it's going to be a Davis uh, reading program for young learners. Many facilitators will just refer to it as a young learners program, um, but its full title is Davis reading program for young learners. And what this really is, is a, um, a program that came Later on, it was developed after the main Davis programs were developed, and it was there somebody realized that the Davis program could be adapted very slightly, and it could be given to people who are beginning to learn to read or struggling with beginning to learn to read, and even cut off some of the problems before they even start. There are the basic focusing tools are in here. Playing with clay and uh, mastering your alphabet is in here. So I actually think that the Young Learners program Personally, I think it's probably a better way of teaching all children to learn to read. And I've had this conversation with other facilitators and they've agreed that the way uh, what Ron discovered about the way children think and the way children learn and this basic problem of being dyslexic and being disoriented uh, and how we approach teaching children to read, uh, the Davis Young Learners is a much better way of doing it. I like to think of um, this really as uh, a first start or an easier step to teaching uh, literacy to children. The next, if, if a young learners program is not what's going to happen, if they're over the age, if they're eight years and older, then really they're going to be looking at a range of Davis programs depending on what difficulties they're having. And really there really is step one, step two, step three. Now, Generally speaking, the Davis Dyslexia Correction Program with trigger words, this is really, I like to think of this as the foundations of a house. It is basically the main Davis program. It's the one that is directly aimed at literacy and you will see very significant improvement in reading within the first week. You'll probably, most of my clients that come to see me and do this first program, they're usually reading at least a year or two years below grade level, and they'll probably get at least one year improvement in one week. So they'll, if they're reading, at, if they're in grade six and they're reading at grade four, they'll get reading at grade five, and sometimes by the end of the program, even higher. By the time you've done this Davis Dyslexia Correction Program, by the time you've done your trigger words and finished trigger words, most of my clients are reading at grade level long before they finish these, and definitely by the time they finish these, they're reading at grade level. If they're not for some reason, um, then it's quite obvious that they'll need the second program, which is called the Davis Attention Mastery Program. And this is where Davis really kicks into uh, high gear. This uh, program is also helps people with ADD and ADHD and many of the other acronyms to do with focusing and attention. Um, but it's really digging down on a second layer of dyslexia or disorientation that we talk about on the Davis program. This program uh, basically is aimed at uh, people who, um, so the Davis Attention Mastery Program is a drug-free solution for ADD and ADHD, suitable for children eight years and up to adults, uh, provides individuals with effective tools to correct problems with hyperactivity, hypoactivity, uh, inability to focus, difficulty staying on task, and inappropriate social behavior attention, behavior, and organizational difficulties. So this is where the Davis program goes far beyond literacy. However, at the same time, it's part of literacy. Um, sequencing is part of literacy. The way we spell words is a sequence, and this program begins to deal with those, those issues. 
The next programme we have is a Davis Math programme, and to be honest, I don't do very many of these. I find by the time people have done step one and step two, step three almost is not needed. Uh, we use language to teach mathematics, and this programme is aimed at the core concepts or the core ideas that are in maths, and how best to deliver maths to somebody who is on this dyslexia disoriented spectrum. Um, the other thing that we will have is some day programs. So I have a program, or all facilitators, sorry, have a program that's for handwriting, and there may be some other programs that facilitators have for uh, tutoring. And depending on that person's background, they may offer some other uh, day programs that are sort of Davis friendly or connected with Davis. I myself don't do a lot of tutoring, but I have done some tutoring, mainly around trigger words and ADD and ADHD issues. <clears throat> and then I tend to do them in sort of a half day or a one day program. Um, so the next part here really is, this is the main Davis structure for learning disabilities or dyslexia, ADD, ADHD, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, nonverbal learning disability, PDD, NOS, that's what this range of programs are really gonna cover. The next part of Davis, or what is also available from Davis, is Davis Autism Programs. Now, I personally don't know enough about Davis Autism Programs to give you the, the rundown on that, but there will be a description in the uh, box below as to where you can contact and find out information about the Davis Programs. There is a sequence of Davis, program, of Davis Autism Programs in the same way there's a sequence of Davis Dyslexia Programs. So if you, uh, in the description box below, as I said, there'll be a way of contacting and finding out about Davis Autism Programs. The next thing that Davis offers is Davis Training Worldwide. And this is for anybody who wants to become a Davis facilitator and Davis facilitators have a whole range of backgrounds. There's also training for educators who want to take Davis into the school system. So maybe you're a teacher and you want to get some of these basic Davis tools in the classroom, then there's uh, training for that, I believe. Again, I am not completely up on the Davis training, so there's going to be a link below uh, to how to get you to Davis training, and that's going to be through the main Davis website. Finally, I suppose, uh, why Davis? Why do Davis? Uh, well, um, why not, really, if you are struggling with uh, dyslexia, ADD, ADHD, uh, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, any of these problems that are on this learning disability spectrum, why would we not want to be as open-minded as we could to anything that would be helpful? But I go one step beyond that. Why do Davis? Well, if we are truly wanting to help children with their minds and how their minds work and give them the best help that we can, if we truly care about the minds of young children, then that is why we want to do Davis. Um, what Davis does for you as a parent, if you are trying to help your child, why would you do Davis? Well, quite simply, it gives you a very simple language and some very simple tools that when your child gets stuck and they're having this dyslexic stuck moment and they can't get themselves unstuck, you can say one of three or four things and they'll get themselves unstuck. But even more importantly, why do Davis? It doesn't matter how much I know as a Davis facilitator, it doesn't matter how much you know as a parent, it doesn't, know how, it doesn't matter how much the teacher knows, the school, the school board, it doesn't matter if you've got a degree from Harvard in learning disabilities, that doesn't matter. The person that needs to be the expert on their dyslexia or their ADD or their ADHD is the young person that's stuck in class and needs to get themselves unstuck. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how much their teacher knows, that's really irrelevant when they get stuck. They need to be able to get themselves unstuck. That's why you want to do Davis. Davis is an amazing set of tools, an amazing way to deal with literacy, focusing, and really um, any of these language-based learning disabilities. 
I could go on for a very long time, but I wanted to make as short a video as I could. There are so many reasons why to do Davis. It, you could make, I'll make a whole video just on that. So if you've liked this video or you found it helpful, please uh, go to the description box and go to my YouTube uh, account and like and subscribe to that. If you'd like to continue this conversation with me, then you can go to my website, which is, dyslex uh, which is overcoming dyslexia. Ca. If you'd like to find out about Davis uh, training or the Navis, nearest Davis facilitator to you, then you can go to dyslexia.com. That's going to be in the description box. If you'd like to find out about Davis autism, then there's going to be a link for that there in also in the description box. And I've also put uh, Ron's books down there as well. So please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.